Aloha and well, it's another beautiful morning in Hawaii. Let me show you this. We've been warming the sheep, you can see these guys right there, with some ivermectin. And ivermectin is a known, uh, proven drug that, well, takes care of many, many species of worms. But let me show you what came out. So we give them a dose. It's one cc per 100 pounds. And when I was looking through their poop this morning, I was changing their water and stuff. And this guy right here, let's see if we can, <laughs> there we go, get a picture of him. Okay, what the hell are you? And that was in the poop. It was all shriveled up to about maybe an inch long. And then when he came out of the poop, this is what I saw right here. Pulled them out, washed them off. There's some poop right there still, but you can see, and the head is like a sucker. And the moral of the story is that everybody has parasites. Okay? <laughs> Look at this thing. Okay, I'll just let it crawl on me. But it's got a sucker on it, and it wants to go ahead and immediately attach itself to the skin. I was trying to pull him off the bucket before, and he's got like a sucker on the front or something that attaches things. But you can see his head, and his body looks sort of like a worm. And whatever species this is, okay, these are in all warm-blooded animals. And humans are animals, right? But could it be possible? This thing, remember, not only swims in your body, but, well, lives in the intestinal tract, most likely. Who knows? No one really knows parasites. A lot of the stages and stuff, we watch them. We have no idea what it is. But look at this thing. What a creepy, creepy thing. And it's pretty big. It's like all super sticky and slimy. It's like a snake. Okay, so... What about if this thing is suckling your blood and it poops inside you? You can see it's got a tail and it poops inside you. What would you, let's put him on here. What would you, wipe this stuff off <laughs> my hand. What would you think? Look at this thing. And it, and it shrivels up, if I hit it like this, the thing was only like an inch long and then it stretched itself out super big. Okay, so it's got, like I said, some type of a sucker head. But could it be possible that all sickness or most sickness is caused by these things? Parasites, hookworms, tapeworms, okay, nematodes, thousands of different types of creatures just like the ocean, we don't know everything that lives in there, but we know some of the things that do. And same with parasites. Parasites is not really looked at too much in this world. Okay, but could it be possible that most disease is caused by parasites and toxicity? Look at this thing. It's like a snake coiling up. And you can see it does have a head and it doesn't like the sun. <laughs> Maybe because you live in the dark. Look at this thing. It's probably the plastic sort of hot on it, and it's and it's doing the, the ballerina twist. But you can see, again, there he goes, shrinking up, because the plastic's probably heating up, doesn't like it. So you can see how small it just became. And now, all of a sudden, what is it now? It looks like a, a clam. <laughs> it looks like a piece of oyster, right? And you can see it's rhythmic motion. Just think again. Could it be possible that these things, and I call them, I call them demons. You know, if you haven't seen our videos on parasites, it's a good idea for you to, to watch a lot of the parasites that we do on Earther Academy. Remember, I do cut the lawn. I just cut the lawn last night. Look, looks so beautiful. And I do maintenance on my yard, just like I need to do maintenance on my body, I need to do maintenance 
on the orchards right here. These are the lychee trees. Just got done cutting all that whole orchard. What a job that was. Maintenance, okay? Forget feeding these guys and giving them clean water. They need to be reduced of their parasites. As you can see, look at all the flies I caught. These are flies. Flies make disease. They spread disease. Look at all those flies in this thing I caught over the last like two weeks. Okay, nasty. Oh, there you go, the captivator. Those work good if you have sheep, okay, or anything. You have to want to really look into this because parasites are everywhere. You can walk on the grass in your bare feet and you can pick up hookworms and a variety of different parasites. <clears throat> you can see here, I'm just feeding everybody, making their rounds this morning. And you can see these are the what the birds get. Look at bananas, peanuts, they got some raw Parmesan cheese, some papaya. Uh, we've got walnuts in there somewhere. Walnuts right there. So that's their morning meal. <laughs> so what I also do, if you haven't seen our videos on CD, okay, you can just uh, look those up. CD, I put CD in their water three times a week because that's one of the ways I can go ahead and keep the sheep healthy. If they get hoof sickness, okay, some type of fungal bacteria, that's a parasite in their hoof. So, you know, if you're a farmer, you understand parasites, you just do. And if you're just a regular domesticated person, you most likely do not understand anything about parasites. Same as the doctors, they don't understand anything about parasites. You don't take any courses on parasites. Parasites, in, in my 40 years of studying these weird creatures that live in the dark, okay, they can be microscopic, microscopic, or they can be, and you can see the sun's killing this guy, or they can go ahead, look, he just shriveled up. Let's give him a little water. Let's bring the demon back here a little bit. You can see he's shriveling up. He wants water. Give him a little water. Let's see if he snaps. Look at how small he got, though. These are shape shifters. They shift into different things, different sizes, okay, just like our cells do. They are called polymorphic. They change to the shape of the terrain. So if you have these creatures inside you, Remember, they're poop inside you. They're constantly draining your energy. Have you wormed yourself ever? <laughs> Think of it. Have you ever wormed yourself? Okay, so, you know, this is not a lot of things that, uh, you know, people like to talk about, but it's just what it is. Think of these parasites, and this is just to give you a little idea. Hey, Bubba. <laughs> There's Bubba. Think of these parasites. Let me put this in my pocket. What's up, Bubba? Oh, my sweetie. Oh, my baby. These parasites, okay, just like in the animals, if you don't worm them, they get sickly. They get skinny. They get malaise. They get fat. Okay, just like you see people. Okay, same thing. My Bubba. What's your Bubba? And he's about two months old right now. Look how big he got from just like a couple pounds. <laughs> so, yeah, you want you want some more? Oh, baby. Oh, it's such sweeties. So, anyway, I just wanted to show you this thing. Bah. Bah. And, again, when's the last time you have tried to reduce the population of these demons inside you? If you don't think demons are real, You've heard about them, you've seen pictures of them, but think of the demons are parasites, parasites that live in the body, they hide in the dark, they suckle blood, just like sort of Dracula, right? <laughs> and you do have to maintain, okay? Just like cutting the lawn, like I said, just like doing a cleanse, just like doing anything. You know, maintenance is of a necessity to live in a physical world because everything gets clogged, everything gets, well, hijacked. As you can see, this thing wants to live in something and it can't live on its own. You can see it's dying right here. It doesn't like the sun. Look, it's dying, slow death, just like you give people when you suck their blood. 
and drain their body of blood. And let's say you go on a diet that doesn't have any blood, and that's a good diet for a short period of time just to clean yourself out, but after a while, if you're just doing vegan or vegetarian, well, these guys are sucking your blood whether you like it or not, and they're pooping inside you, and they're stealing your life force, your oxygenating ability is made by your red blood cells. Anyways, take a watch at our private channel, eartheracademy.com. It's only 10 bucks a month right now. Cancel anytime you want to, it doesn't matter. Remember, I just do this because I think uh, people should see different perspectives and or see what I'm doing, that's all. It's a research institute where, you know, you want to experiment with yourself? Well, what do you think the doctors are doing? They're experimenting with you too, using synthetic petrochemicals, right? Antibiotics, anti-life. So you have to really think this through. You know, if you have different things that live inside you that are stealing, okay, your food from the table, I'm talking your biological food, you, making you so your mind has, is brain fog. You can't think well because remember the poop inside you makes you so you can't have any critical thinking. It poisons the body. Just like if I would poop inside you, right? Well, that would poison you, wouldn't it? What happens when the parasites poop inside you then? And they're cannibalizing you. Not only maybe sharing some of the junk food that you're eating, because most of them just eat junk food. That's the reason why they're there, right? They're processors of death. Okay, so anyways, clean, healthy animals, okay, that are not domesticated, they can still have parasites, but usually their, their parasites are in their gut. They're not in their flesh. Once you get a damaged intestinal tract, that's what happens, okay, from pesticides, from different irritants, oxalates, lectins, perforating, we call leaky gut syndrome, right? And if you get a hole in your intestinal tract, which is only one cell layer thick, what happens if you get a hole in there? You get a breach, <laughs> right? Because your intestinal tract, your mouth to your anus, right, is about 35 feet, maybe even more in some people. <laughs> but it's outside the body, it's a tube. And it only lets things in an ionic form in through this sort of very special vaulted chamber, right? It doesn't let particles in, it doesn't let parasites in or anything else. But if you get a breach in the hole, you get a breach in the hull of your boat, it starts to leak. And this is what leaky gut syndrome is. So what are you gonna do about it? <laughs> what did I have to do about it? I had leaky gut syndrome, okay? I had to take matters in my own hands for a while and do a lot of deep research. So watch our videos on when I changed my diet and look what happened. I gained 25 pounds or so in a couple of months of solid muscle without any testosterone of synthetic testosterone or anything, just following the Earth Academy protocols and re-nourishing myself with animal products. Leaving out as many vegetables as I can just because I wanna take a break from oxalates, glyphosate and or any other pesticide or things that are in the plants. Remember, cabbage has 49 different pesticides that are naturally grown in the cabbage, so things don't eat it. And if they do, they get sick. So these are, again, called phytoalexins, and these are the plant poisons to, to, well, rid themselves or to defend themselves against parasites, okay? Okay, one last thing before we go. <clears throat> parasites are real and you can see look he's dead the sun killed him oh Dracula got the the light right what happens to him ah! and you can see he's done yeah so sorry about that brother okay we'll do some videos on the different parasitic new parasitic uh, therapies that I've learned that are super effective for these demons. So, I mean, we've done a lot of different, like I said, videos on Earther Academy on parasites. Watch just the, the categories of parasites, just to go ahead and see a few of them. These are real, these are real. 
And again, the question, when's the last time you wormed yourself? Just think of that. <laughs> when's the last time you wormed yourself? If you ever have. And if you are feeling tired, you've got pimples on your skin, you've got problems with your bowel movements, as far as constipation, diarrhea, bloating, gas, everything else, it's probably most likely not only your diet, but it's also parasites. And I can say, like I said, the number one cause that I would say disease makers are, are these demons, these parasites. So look into them. Like I said, I've been studying parasites for about 40 years and they're the most bizarre creatures. And no one knows how they work. Remember, how do they work? Okay, what a, what a machine. And they usually invade not only when you take them in by an egg, just by breathing it, by sweeping the floor, right? But they go through life cycles in the body. They go in the lungs and make some babies, and they go into the bloodstream and go to the liver and make some babies, and they go into the brain and make some babies, some kidneys, and different areas and organs so they can control. And then they come back to the lungs, and you get sort of what you call sick again, right? <clears throat> you start coughing up, you swallow a little bit of mucus, and you know what happens? Now this thing turns into a tapeworm. That's the life cycle of the of the, the tinea saginata, right? <laughs> how does it know how to do all that stuff? How does it know how to make babies in all these different areas of the body? It's not just in the intestines. Remember, these things are in the organs. They're in the muscles. So there's certain types of anti-parasitic drugs that are very effective and very safe. I'm not saying that, okay, and I've used them all. But this is what the literature says. So, could it be possible, again, that most disease is caused by parasites and toxicities, not only in your food, but in your air, but maybe even the microwave tech that's everywhere, right? <laughs> Anyways, lots to say, but I got lots to do. <laughs> All right, here we go. Beautiful Hawaii day with real accumulus clouds. Look at that. Wow, with the birds singing. Okay, there we go. Whew, wow, aloha.